I'm here at the Doubletree International Plaza Hotel in Toronto to explore what's going on at Polaris 21. Formerly known as Toronto Trek, it's one of the biggest science fiction conventions around. I'm here to see what things are like on the other side, and maybe I'll even get to see some famous science fiction personalities, so let's get started. I'm your host, Casey D, and this is News in Space. Captain Malguen Zenta Yidrei Goch, Military Governor of Quebec. I'm KCD, I'm from News in Space. Welcome. Um, I'm here today and I'm investigating the relationship between science and science fiction. And I'm just wondering, in your personal opinion, what leads what? Is science inspired by science fiction or is it the other way around? Science fiction is inspired by science but also to science fiction inspires scientists and new sciences. So it's both. It's a little bit of both. Perfect. Well, I'll call you later, okay? It's a good answer. Thanks, guys. You got good pictures? <laughs> She's mine. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Casey D from News in Space. Hi, I'm Debbie Blazer. Hi, Debbie, nice to meet you. Uh, Debbie, I was wondering, in your personal opinion, what is it that draws people to science fiction? I would have to think it's the way the interaction within the different species kind of gives an idea of the racism that happens within our environment now. The interaction between the two groups is really nice, and it also gives a chance as well for science to get out there and also a chance for subliminally, not really subliminally, but an I can get an idea out there like Battlestar, uh, Battlestar Galactica, the original series, was based on a religion and I don't think a lot of people knew that so they got the teachings of that religion or if it was uh, Next Generation it was how they interacted with the different species or even Deep Space Nine where they had actually people living on the station. So it, I think it has something to look forward to in the future and with the technology going in that direction as well with the communicators and coming into cell phones and just different things like that that it eventually we will have that kind of society. Neat, that's a really interesting way to look at it. I never I never looked at it that way. I didn't know that about uh, Battlestar Galactica. That's very, very cool. Um, all right, well, thanks for your opinion, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks. Ron, uh, Shepard Book is a very spiritual character and uh, with the technologically advanced uh, society of today, how do, how do you think he fits in or how does he uh, mesh with, with that? From a spiritual place, yeah. which, is, which is always, you know, when you bring you bring that spirituality with your technology if you happen to be, you know, if you're capable of doing the technology. Otherwise, you know, you just... Um, the, the great thing that I liked about him was the fact that he was not a one-dimensional character, you know. I mean, so that he had enough... Um, enough um, breadth to be able to... Um, exist and sort of flourish in any kind of environment, particularly because I think as much as they didn't really focus on it, but individually I think Book was really, really a, a, a great humanitarian. So on that level you're always able to connect, you know, which is why I was so happy that they didn't use a lot of prosthetics and things, you know, because um, it meant that I was always able to connect on a human level. Thank you. 
Probably not the answer you expected. <laughs> 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 I hope that's satisfying. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of good. Steve, are you personally interested in science fiction? Well, it, uh, you mean in terms of do I believe it in, in life and other planets? Just or, are you or into just, it? Are you, are you a fan? Yeah. Yeah. You're into it? So yeah. you must find it easy to get into character. Uh, I like, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I like that aspect of it because it's, it, it isn't uh, of this plane, you know. Um, I mean, we can play killers and psychopaths and all that stuff, but when you go to sci-fi, there's really no real rules. I mean, you can you can create and do as you please, you know. And um, I was I was a big uh, Lost in Space fan when I was a kid, and I got to meet Mark Mark Goddard, the Goddard, whatever his name is. He's a wacko, and uh, yeah, and, and that and Star. I was always, a, a, you know, my my whole the reason I actually became a fan was because I really believed that there was life on other planets. You know, Chariots of the Gods and all those books. And I was like, I used to read that as a kid, and I go, you know, and I swore I saw a UFO yeah. when I was 18. But then I don't know because I was into the my dad's bourbon, and I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but no, it stopped. Looked at me, I waved, and it kept going. And uh, asked for a ride, and give it, give me one. But yeah, I mean, Close Encounters with her. That that's the kind of sci-fi that I was more into. You know, the the visitors and that sort of thing. And. So are, are those movies um, what, what makes you believe, like, do you want to be a character like one of those characters in those movies? I like, you know what, what I actually, what, what I truly, I think the shows that are really successful in terms of, in terms of just in terms of the business are the sci-fi shows that are sci-fi, they're futuristic, they, they're, they're exploring other life, but they're shows about the characters mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, gadgets and things. That's one thing I don't appreciate about any current movie right now or any, anything on television is when they try to give you the filler, the, the cosmetic thing that, ooh, we're going to stimulate you with a big bang or we're going to stimulate you with, you know, but there's no story. Yeah. He still, there still has to be an evolution to it. There still has to be an arc to the story. There has to be care, care. care taken and you want to develop the characters and, and, you know, going back to Andromeda, I think that a lot of my problems with that particular show was that Hey man, if we just write this, it's gonna be really cool. But it's like, why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's the big why, and, and don't get me all serious. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to be serious. These are tears. There you go. Um, yeah. So I, I would, I just appreciate whatever the material that there's some care given is, isn't just about stuff. It isn't just about being looking this way or feeling or or uh, special effects, so. Okay, thanks. Since there are so many concepts and science is advancing so rapidly, uh, is there any science fiction idea that you really hope never becomes real? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, that's a good question. Well, there's probably a few that I already wish hadn't come to. Um, you know, when I think about, it, it's so interesting, you know, scientists aren't, I, I don't believe on the whole, they get into it with political ideas. They get into it because they are curious about broadening our horizons and, and crossing borders. And, and so then when, when wonderful inventions are created and used for political means or war means, you know, that breaks my heart. And I'm sure it breaks um, a lot of scientists' hearts as well. Just to be fun, is there a cool science fiction idea that you wish was real? Um, well, replicator stuff, and it almost is, right? There's this new fax machine they've come out with that can actually print, or this printer that can actually print matter. And I went, this is one step away from replicators. I mean, have you guys heard about this thing? Oh, it's, I have. You've heard about it, right? Yes. It's unbelievable. It's, it's mm -hmm. a, it can create three-dimensional objects. And, and so you, I mean, that wow. terrified me <laughs> and excited me, because, you know, that would be great. You don't yeah. want to go out and just punch in, and then your bottle of wine shows up. Perfect. <laughs> 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 so you feel we're not that far off. <laughs> maybe not the bottle of wine, maybe a few more years. But, um, but yeah, but I mean, definitely, I just read it about two months ago, this article, and I, I was amazed. I went, wow, that's, that is within our grasp. Again, going back to your early question, the frightening thing is somebody could fax somebody a nuclear bomb, mm -hmm. right? So uh, until we are conscious enough, perhaps I'll have, we still have to go to the liquor store to buy a bottle of wine. Well, 
That's it for this edition of News in Space. I'm KCD. Live long and prosper.